What's up friends, this is Adam with Paracord. And in this video, we are gonna talk about Facebook lead forms. And we're gonna basically do a comprehensive review of lead forms because they are fancy. And they're one of the best ways to generate leads at, at extremely low cost. They tend to be a little bit lower quality, but they're amazing because you can generate a high volume of leads without a ton of effort because you don't even need to build a landing page or anything like that. So, all right, let's get right into it. There are basically three components to building a, a lead form campaign. So the first one is building the actual lead form, and that's the form that people submit to fill in. The second one is building the ads, and then the third one is actually getting those leads. So someone being notified, because it's not actually set up automatically, which you might originally think with Facebook, uh, but that's not how it works. All right, so, uh, to get you started, we're gonna start uh, with building a lead form. And this is Outdoor uh, Adventure Marketing, a brand that we run. This is the Facebook page. So if you have admin rights and you go to your Facebook page and you head over here to Publishing Tools, you're gonna wanna click that and it's gonna open up your Publishing Tools. And in Publishing Tools, you have a variety of different options, but when you scroll down here on the left, you have Lead Ads Forms. It's a weird way to say it. And then you can go to your Forms Library. So here's a couple of forms that we have. And I'm gonna say, and what you'll notice here, uh, it would be nice if we created names, but we didn't create a name for this one. Um, but it's active, it was created August 24th, and then there are 57 leads in this form. They expire after 90 days. So you can see how many are expired, uh, it's not being shared, and then you can download the leads into an Excel format. So when I hit download, it says, you know, which ones do you wanna do? All the new ones or download by date range. And then if I click that, you know, so it gives me some different options, okay? So this is where you download and can kind of see how your lead forms are doing just on the lead form level, uh, not on the ad level. If you're gonna be looking at the ad level, we're gonna do that somewhere else and I'll show you that in a second. So, all right, so let's, uh, let's start creating a lead form. So I'm gonna hit create lead form. I'm gonna do a new lead form, because that's fun. And then this is gonna be, you know, our video test. And you have a lot of different options here, okay? What you'll notice is on the left, you have the options, and then what you notice on the right is you start to see a preview. Up here, you have save and then uh, finish. So you can save it as a draft and use it later, or you can finish it and then use it in an ad. Now, once you finish a form, a lead form, you cannot edit it again, okay? So you don't wanna be working on this, then it finished, and then be like, oh, I'm gonna come back and change it later because that just doesn't work. That's not exactly uh, how it goes. So once you finish, you cannot edit it again, but you can save a draft or you can duplicate it, um, but do not finish it unless you're absolutely done. All right, so we have a few different options here on the left. We have more volume. So that's saying that we wanna get a higher volume. And then the last one is higher intent. So it says add a review step that gives people a chance to confirm their info, okay? So when I click down here, it says review your information. If I uncheck that, let me go back up here, you lose the review your information option, okay? So more volume, like I was saying earlier, the quality of the leads is sometimes not amazing. So it, it depends on what you're using it for, or if you have in mind. I mean, if your lead volume is not incredibly high in the first place, then kind of who cares if it's not amazing lead, uh, lead quality? But if you're getting maybe, you know, we have a client that gets 750, uh, 800 leads per month. When that's the case, you wanna make sure that you're providing some boundaries and frameworks so that the quality is better. Okay, so uh, you can hit higher intent, then that gives you a review screen. I'm also gonna click here on settings. You can say it's restricted, so only people who are delivered your ad directly can submit this form or open. You, uh, the ad can be shared and anybody can submit it. So. You know, for me, I actually prefer this always to be open. The two that we looked at were restricted. And if I had to do those again, I would change them to open because I want anyone to be able to submit a lead. Like if the ad is shared, I want that lead to be able to, I want the form to be able to be submitted. You can, um, you can change field IDs. So right now the form currently only has email and full name. So you can change the ID of the field and then you can add in tracking parameters if you like. So, um, you know, uh, adding a variety of different parameters here. So they have language. Um, like English as the sample. So where are these leads coming from and uh, what parameters do you wanna send in? Okay, so I'm gonna head back over to content. So this video is not like an hour long. Uh, we have an intro here, this is optional. I'm gonna turn it off or on. So if I turn it on, it allows you to put in a bunch of text. So, um, you know, contact us today. I like to use the image from the ad because if I'm doing different ads, then uh, the image will just show and it'll match. It'll be, they click the ad, then it'll show the correct image. So I use image from the ad and that image will show right here. And then, or you can upload an image, so that's always the same. And then you have paragraph text or bullet text. So you can do different types of content here. And if you do paragraph, 
then this can be much longer, right? And this can be very, very long, right? So this can get long, 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 long. So uh, if you do contact us today, long text, and then you get down to the questions. So here, I'm gonna scroll down. Yeah, I hit questions. And we have uh, a headline, sign up by reviewing your, by providing your info below, so you can change that. Uh, we, it defaults to email and full name. I'm gonna show more options. And then you can select any one of these. So we have a job title, gender, relationship status. And when I add those, then they're populated. Now, one thing that's important to know is that these fields are auto-populated by Facebook. So the gender is automatically gonna be dropped in there for the consumer so that when they, um, when they hit the form, this form is gonna be completed and then they can hit next, unless for some reason it's not completed in their profile, right? So like they might not have work email complete in their profile. And um, that's a really important one. And if you're doing like B2B lead gen, you know, do you want their personal email? Like a lot of people's Facebook email doesn't really seem to be an email that they use a lot, or at least our responses are not incredibly high with the personal emails. So that's a little bit of a problem. So um, you can uh, select any one of these options or you can add custom questions. So you have multiple choice, conditional, where you can upload conditional answers. So this is kind of like a longer thing, but uh, arrange your conditional answers in a CSV file, download a sample, so you can click that, or learn more. Um, I'm not gonna get that deep into that one. Um, you can do appointment scheduling. So what's the question you're asking? Someone will reach out to you and then allow them to schedule an appointment, which is really cool. Or you can add a custom question, which is just like a short answer, multiple choice, right? So very cool being able to add additional questions and, oh, short answer right here, sorry. Uh, there's, there's a short answer that's just like text. So like, hey, what do you like, right? So this is just gonna be text, or excuse me, at the top here. Um, hey, what do you like? That's just gonna be text. You've also got you know bullets and, and so on and so forth. So all of these questions appear at the top and then the other content appears below them. Uh, but those are your four options. So short answer, multiple choice, conditional, or appointment scheduling. And you can only do conditional appointment scheduling one time because you don't need to do them uh, more than once, obviously. All right, so uh, the next thing is we have the privacy policy section. So Facebook requires you to have a privacy policy on your website that indicates how you're gonna use the customer data that transferred from Paracor to you uh, and your business and your website. So you can, um, you, you add the text here, so like read privacy policy, and you'll see down here on the right hand side that it says read privacy policy, you're gonna to link to your URL. So um, usually it's like website.com slash privacy policy. Uh, and then you can add a custom disclaimer if you want. So let's say maybe there's like legal conditions, you're in like the legal field or medical or I don't know, something where you need like custom disclaimers, you can do that here. And so this is very, very, very important. Uh, Facebook is gonna make sure that you say that you're approving, uh, that you uh, have a privacy policy and you, and you acknowledge that you have a privacy policy and that you're telling your consumers how you're gonna handle their data. I don't think Facebook actually checks that as far as I know, but they do ask you and then you have to say, yes, I did that and then move on from there. The next section is the review screen. So this is um, what we were talking about just a second ago. So uh, you have the edit button right here then personal info, email, and full name. So you can review it and then you have the submit button, so they will hit submit. And then you have a thank you screen. So it says, thank you, you're all set, description. Then you can add a button here, visit a website, download, which is cool. So you can have a website link, button text, download now. So you can link to a document or something like that. Or you can do call business and then you have a phone number. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that At the end of the lead form, you can actually get a phone call, so send someone to your website or have them download a document and then you can customize the content here on your screen. Uh, that's creating the lead form. Now again, you can save it as a draft, but if you finish it, you cannot edit it again. So when I go back here, I don't have any options to edit these forms, okay? I can archive it, that's it, or boost it or download. These are published forms, no good. If I go to my draft library, then I can do that. Um, then I can uh, see the drafts and then edit them. And then, all right, so I talked about three different components. You build the lead form, which is what we just did. And then you add the lead form to an ad, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. Since we're in this interface, uh, you need to receive the leads as a business. And so that's the leads setup. When you head to this section, we are, so I'm gonna hide this message. This allows you to connect the lead form when someone hits submit to go somewhere where you're actually gonna get it, okay? In our case, 
we almost always handle the leads through Zapier. Now, Zapier allows us to take the lead information into Zapier and then distribute it wherever it needs to go. So it might, uh, so oftentimes we will send an email out of Zapier to the client or to ourselves. We might then also push it into a CRM and maybe sometimes push it into like an email automation system. So a, a one lead might be going three different places. And so when you, when you organize it through Zapier, it's much easier to do that. Uh, there's a search box and then you can search for like HubSpot or ActiveCampaign or Infusionsoft or Zoho or whatever. And then you connect it and then you match up like fields with the destination fields. But this is the area where you need to um, connect your CRM. All right, so, uh, but what, what you do is you search, you connect it to your, um, your CRM, and then you go from there. So um, I'm not gonna show you that on this video right now because I'm already connected, but if you, if you have any additional questions about that, just send me a comment and I will post another video or something. All right, now the second component is connecting the lead form to an ad. And so what you need to make sure that you do is you create a new campaign, and when you're doing a lead campaign, you're gonna select lead generation right here. So if you select any of these other objectives, you cannot use a lead form with a different objective. So you can use a lead form with a video, yes, but a video needs to be uh, used in the lead generation objective. You can do a lead form with a carousel, with a, um, with a regular image, with, uh, with a lot of different things, but just like the messages objective, you can only do lead forms when you're in the lead generation objective, okay? So if you hit that, then it's gonna give you a couple options here at the bottom, like do you wanna A-B test it, or what's the name, so on and so forth, budget optimization, okay? So I'm not gonna create a new campaign because I don't need to, um, but what I'll do is I'll show you a, a lead gen campaign that I already have created. So here, this is a lead generation campaign. You can see it says leads form. So this is how you know that it's, a, that it's a lead gen campaign because it shows leads right here under results. And this shows landing page views. This is just a traffic campaign. And so I'm gonna head into here and I am going to, so you can see objective lead generation. And then I have an ad set here. So these are some story ads They're in the video I just filmed. And when I head over to the story ad, and I'm building the ad. So this is just the standard ad building interface. At the bottom, I select the lead form that I wanna use, and then, and then when someone clicks the ad, then they will see this lead form, and they can fill out their information, and then when they hit submit, they're, they're, the lead form is gonna to go to Zapier, like I was showing you. So um, it's really important that you connect the lead form to the ad. I mean, you can't really run the ad without the lead form, and then select the right one. So, you can use the same lead form and the same Zapier integration and the same CRM integration on like, you know, a dozen or a hundred different ads. So that's really nice. The lead form lives separately from the ads and then you manage that lead form separately. Now, if you were to archive a lead form, you know, and it's, and it's with running ads, you know, that's a problem. I'm sure you'd get an error. I've never actually tried that. Um, but you can also then create a lead form here and this starts the same process that we were doing before. I like to use this interface to kind of manage my lead forms and everything else because it just reminds me of like, this is where like my publishing tools and all of my content exists. You have your video library, videos you can cross, cross post, events, you know, uh, instant experiences. It's just like everything's here. I kind of prefer it to the automated systems that they give you options for in other parts. When you've run the campaign, now you can see, all right, I have, you know, these lead forms and I click here and this is showing my lead forms. and. I can't actually download them from here. You used to be able to download them. You have to go back to publishing tools in order to download them, which is fine. But this will show you five, 14, five lead forms were submitted. You know, some of these are converting, this one's converting a lot better than the other ones, um, which is just a Facebook lead form. And the stories and Instagram are not converting as well. So that's the long and the short of it. That's how uh, Facebook lead forms work. And that's how you set them up, get them integrated into an ad. And then that kind of entire ecosystem works. So if you have any questions, please let me know. My name is Adam with Paracore. We're a pay-per-click lead generation agency. Uh, visit our website, paracore.com, if you'd like to learn more. Or like the video, subscribe, or leave a comment. And I would appreciate any feedback as I make videos and uh, try to continually improve them. So thanks a lot. And I'll uh, see you in the next video.